Okay. As a survivor of bullying, I'm now 68, and you're just lucky I'm still here. Because if I would have known about suicide when I was the age of 8 to 12 years old, I would have done it. That's how bad it was. It was all types. It was physical, psychological, sexual. I don't know how I survived it. But I'm so grateful that today there are resources that can deal with this type of thing. <laughs> there was nothing back then. You'd tell your parents, but there was, it was just you're being a sook, like, you know, stand up for yourself. Like, I mean, how do you do that? You got one girl that's about, uh, what was she? She'd have been about 12 and I might have been eight. She had a gang of boys. And she'd get the boys to surround me so I couldn't get away from her, I couldn't run. She spit on her hand and she hit me so hard across the face. When I was eight years old, I spun around about three times. I never forgot that. But I've forgiven everybody. <laughs> I had to in order to live. Also because I was bullied, my daughter was bullied. But I had to bully the bully to get him to stop. I called his parents. This is terrible. I mean, he's catching her every day coming home from school, and he was hitting her. She said, well, it's, it's got to be her fault. Well, we know he has a bad temper, and, and we don't aggravate him. I said, thank you very much, and I hung up the phone. And that day I watched. I stopped the car right in the middle of the street. I left the car door open, and I went over to him, and I didn't touch him because I knew I'd go to jail. <laughs> but what I said to him, Mm, can't be repeated anywhere. And uh, I said, then don't make me come back the second time. He never touched her again. He didn't have very much good to say about me, but at least he never hit her again. And then my son got the same thing. So, like, did I have, like, go ahead, bully me and bully my kids too, written on my forehead or what? It just, almost like the cycle of abuse and uh, right. violence in, uh, in life. So that's my point, and I, Calvin, I promise and I pledge right here, if you can use me any way to help stop this bullying, I'm there. All right. I'm going to be a All participant. Right. I'm not going to go on Facebook. Yeah, June book. That's uh, that's uh, I sign myself that quite often. Is that a nickname? So, well, they used to call me a bug. Uh, <laughs> You're a bug. You just keep bugging, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Why do you bug so much? Because I bug until I get what I want. <laughs> anyway, Tim Hortons. You think Timmy's person? Say what? Are you a big Timmy's person? No. How would you describe yourself in a nutshell? Not an old uh, protector, a teacher, a healer, a, a work for the underdog or whatever, things like that. Nice. You know. I like that. That's, I like that. That's what I like to do. That's almost how I would want to describe myself. Well, there. See, uh, you know, maybe we're, we're running across one another because of, may, because of this. Yeah. I know, yes. I know, it's, that, I know this was meant to be. Yeah. It was meant to be. Like, my life story, uh, I I didn't know where I belonged. Yeah. Lost, totally lost yeah. when I was born. You I got pictures of me, a baby, a picture. I was a foster child. But when I was born, my face is so, like... For four years, I'm sure, my face was like, what am I doing here? What is this? How did I get here? What's going on here? How come I'm wearing dresses? Yeah. <laughs> I hate dresses. Yeah. I, I don't like to dress in dresses yeah. or skirts. I, I was always, I think I was in my past lives, which I have many. I've been a priestess. I was a scribe in Egypt. Uh, I was a, like a nun as well, and I, that's what I did it, when I was young too. I joined the convent. I was there for three years. Really, really. I, as far as I was concerned, I was happy. <laughs> I didn't have to go anywhere else. Hey, three meals a day and right. roof over my head. All some, I had to do was security. Exactly, and that's what I needed all my life. So I thought, ha ha, I got it made. Yeah, right.
Mm. I got sick like that and they took it as a sign from God that uh, that was not my place, that there was something else I was supposed to do. At 18 years of age, I was back out, begged my way back into the foster home because <laughs> wow. I had no place to go. <laughs> so anyway, I joined the army. Wow. Oh, but, uh, did God don't want me, maybe right. the devil does. <laughs> <laughs> so off I went to the army. Well, I was, oh, great place. I was some happy. Had to get up early in the morning, but that yeah. was okay. Everything else, three meals a day, roof over my head, security. sort of. Yeah, Belonging. security again. So there I was. Oh, God, I was some happy. I lasted about eight months. And they had a, had a physical or something I had to go through, and they found the lump in my breast. Oh, no. now, oh, oh, we can't be responsible for that. That was there before you came in, so, uh, yeah, you're out, discharged, gone. <laughs> so I said, oh, my God, God don't want me, the devil don't want me, where am I supposed to go oh. now? <laughs> There's nothing in between. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh my, so I pulled a, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the sound of music thing. I found the man with, uh, older than me, by 22 years, a little bit older, <laughs> and four kids. <laughs> wow. And we got married. Well, again, roof over my head, yes. meals every day, yeah. no matter what abuse was there, at least you had that. You weren't out on the road. So I suffered the abuse and everything. No physical abuse. If you would have hit me, I would have, I would have been out of there. I would have been out of there so fast, I don't care what. But uh, eventually I did leave them after 39 years. I well, attempted good. suicide. I didn't attempt it, but I had the ideation yes. three times in four years. And I said, no, 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 no. I didn't come all this way now to go and jump in the river yeah. and get everything I didn't need and not what I needed. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, too much of a, of a bad thing is not good. No, no, there's <laughs> not, no. A little bit you can stand. All right, so how has bullying affected your life? Oh, that's a like loaded, loaded one. That's a loaded one. That could be all year to tell yeah. that story. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly changed, in my opinion of myself, it changed who I resulted in being. The self-esteem was the big thing uh, uh, up till the age of, oh God, well, never, <laughs> until I was about mm. 65. <laughs> Till I started having some self-esteem. Wow. I like I was all confused. Is this right? Is it not right? Is it, da, 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 da. You don't know. What do I have the right to expect? Yeah. From other people. Yeah. At four years old, how are you going to say? You don't know what. Maybe figure that's part of life. Then, of course, when I went to school, being a foster child, that's the first thing that comes out of the children's mouths at that time. Do you know yet you're a foster child? And I said, well, tell me something I don't know, because I did know that. But, uh, like, that, that girl that was the head of that gang, I know those boys didn't want to do what they did, because I, I knew they didn't, but she was the boss. And they would surround me, and she'd be in the middle with me. One day, if I didn't come up with the five cents or ten cents she wanted, like that I had for for candy or a little treat going to school, if I didn't, if she got me and I had already spent it, like I got slapped and hit and kicked and punched and by her, not the boys. The boys just made sure that I didn't get away. After the other the other girl with the gang stopped bullying me. Then I had the neighbors to contend with that lived next door. There was three boys. Well, I don't know how many fist fights before I was able to get to the house. And we're only next door. I got scars from every one of them kids. <laughs> I was scared to death when they said stitches. <laughs> Back then, they didn't go to the hospital for that either. He went to the doctor's office, and he had office hours at night. 
And I went in there and I had like pillowcases and towels and everything around my head. Laying on the table and he's trying to sew me up and the phone kept ringing. And he's coming and oh. he put another stitch in the phone and ringing. He goes, the phone, come back. <laughs> stitch it. And finally he said, Jesus Christ, he said, I'm never going to get you sewed up tonight. <laughs> oh, Dr. Potter, I never forgot that. But with the neighbors next door, uh, the French, they were all French, and I had to learn French in a hurry, so I have to know when to run and when to stay. <laughs> the, their mother was a, a real witch. Like, she was a bee with an itch, you know, too. <laughs> or even worse, I don't know what. But she was bad. Oh, she was, she was crazy. She was absolutely crazy. She come out with the broom after me one day. I was riding my little bike on, on the street. And she said, told me in French to go home, to get off her road. She said, this is my house, and in front of my house is my, is my yard, and that's my street. You can't go on it. So I couldn't even ride my bike past her place. Like, uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What the hell kind of life is this? Like I said, at that time, there were so many things happened to me up to the age of 12 years old, I would have done it. Because that was, oh, just hated, hated to, to get up in the morning, hated to go to school. The kids got it good in one way today because they have the, okay, they got the social media, but they have the power to turn it off. They don't have to sit there and look at this texting or text it back. On Facebook, they don't have to go on Facebook. And if you're being bullied, shut it off. And then you can deal with it at school. That's the only place you got to deal with it. And maybe it might save some lives. Well, the only thing that saved me, um, there was a, this man, I, I hope he's, God has him in heaven because he was so nice. And he made me captain of the, of the basketball team. And, me? Why me? Like, isn't there somebody else? Like, I never played it before. I didn't know anything about it. And I, and by him choosing me, I went like I was seven feet tall. I thought, geez, somebody sees some worth in me. I'm not all that bad. I guess I'm not all that stupid. He, cho he chose me. His name was Jimmy Fox. I never forgot it, and I played every sport, the volleyball, I played every sport I could play, and I skated at the rink as much as I could just to get it, keep away from the house so I wouldn't get the, uh, the abuse when I was, that's my teenage years. But like the, the bullying was, it was physical, the physical hurt an awful lot, but the psychological damage that was done is irreparable until I was age 63 because I just fell right into the pattern all my life yeah. until I got the therapy in 63, at age 63. I, I was being told all the time, something wrong with your head. Something wrong with your head. Well, what's the matter with me? What's wrong with me? This is all in your head. There's something wrong with your head, no matter what I did. Something wrong with my head. They're, 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 they wouldn't understand uh, how, far, well, at least he didn't hit you. <laughs> if you could see the scars in here yeah. and the, ba the brain, how battered it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you don't see. Nobody understands. At least he didn't hit you. Yeah, you got a roof over your head. You got lots to eat. He didn't hit you. Yeah. Ruined. Mm -hmm. Absolutely ruined. From the bullying into that one and just continued on, ruined. Yeah. Then uh, I went to work for uh, the abused and battered women. And I think that's where I started to, hey, what's going on? My life is not right. That's not the way I'm supposed to be treated. And that was when my ears perked up.
I am fantastic and fabulous today. I've overcome it. I've given it all away. I've forgiven everything. Uh, that was the secret. Uh, you have to forgive. I can't forget, but I forgive. And forgiveness is, just means that you dealt with the pain. But it's made me a much better person now. I'm uh, more tolerant of things. I look at things differently. I have uh, more compassion. I have empathy. Um, I have all the best qualities I could ever ask for. I'm fantastic. <laughs> Would it make any difference to you today if your bully said she was sorry? No. I still would have compassion, and she's still forgiven. You're still forgiven, regardless. But it just, I would be very interested to know why. That's all. Just why. I, 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 that's all I am. I'm just one big funny bone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even the children, when I was uh, working in the transition house for uh, abused and battered women, They'd come up to me and they'd take my 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 pants or my apron, whatever I had on, and they used to rub their nose all over me and they'd say, I like you, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your snuff, little... <laughs> you described yourself to me as a feminist stand-up comic, and what would be an example of a feminist stand-up joke? Oh, uh, this one. This was funny. For me, it was funny. <laughs> I was working, and he was home because he was older, and he was looking after the house and uh, whatever, and he used to have supper ready when I'd get home at night, which was, oh, fantastic, you know. Anyway, so I came home this evening at uh, supper time, and as usual, I go in the door, and I say, well, how was your day, you know? Mm -hmm. And here he is. He's standing in the, against the, the cupboards, He's got his arms folded like this. He's got his oven mitts on. And he, I said, oh, he said, don't talk to me. I'm so freaking disgusted and tired. He said, all I ever do is cook and clean and wash. I never get to go anywhere. And now on top of that, they don't leave, they even leave the car for me once in a while. I said, whew, jeez, you sound like a wife. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all I do is cook and clean and wash. I never get to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, oh, funny things happen. That is, that's a good story. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you make people laugh? How do I feel? Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're letting go of maybe some bad stuff they they were thinking about at that time, but then they're able to laugh about something. Uh, maybe they'll find that something that seemed to be a mountain is only half the size of that mountain. It's just a molehill. And if you're not happy, well, you better find your funny bone and get happy because life is serious, yes, but not not 24 hours a day. Well, what was it I said? They got to learn... Be happy by learning not to sweat the petty stuff and don't pet the sweaty stuff. <laughs> so bottom line, signing off, what does Junebug have to say about bullying? It's wrong in so many ways. The damage. You can never repair the damage that you've done by bullying. Uh, the bullies, uh, I wish you would understand this, that there's no need of it. And to the people who have been bullied, you better start taking care of yourself now. Tell somebody, go, don't stop until somebody does something. Or contact me and I'll help. <laughs> Tell somebody we'll do something about it. Talk to Junebug. Yes. Junebug's got your back. You got that right. The back and the side and the front too if I have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every part of you. Yeah. Not to worry. Yep. Yep. And bullies beware. Yeah. And that's why I'm so fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and fabulous. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Is because I, I had to turn myself around that way and do only do good works. 
do the best I can anywhere in any situation I have to be in, make it work. Mm -hmm. Make it work. And make it good. Yep. Make it good. I could probably add Ned, Ned, Ned here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>